Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Inside the Hall of Fame, I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, along with my man, Brad Gilmore. As always, we got a special guest stepping inside the Hall of Fame today, getting a little champagne wishes and caviar dreams. International superstar, uh, former many times El Grand Campeon, he is Santos Escobar. What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? I'm very good. Book, thank you so much for having me, uh, for giving me this opportunity to have this one-on-one with you, Greg, and also the WWE Universe. Oh, man, um, you know, Backlash coming up next week, May 6th, in Puerto Rico, and uh, we know it's going to be good, but, but, but I want to talk to you, man, about your your life and your career, man. You're a very interesting cat. You've been around for a long time, and you cut your teeth uh, the hard way um, by by getting in the trenches, man, dodging those landmines. Talk to me about that that early part of your career, man, in, in Mexico. Um, and, and not just talk to me about the good part about it. Talk to me about how hard was it to make it from Mexico, being a second generation, super second generation luchador. How hard was it to actually make it to um, WWE? Well, Actually, being a second-generation luchador was super hard for me because, first of all, my dad, he didn't want me to do this at all. So that was the first obstacle I had to go through. Uh, my mom, she always wanted me to go to school. Uh, I was born and raised in Mexico City. And uh, if you go back uh, however years ago when I was born, um, it, it'd be difficult to think that I would be here th- the way, the place I am right now, with the people I am right now, the position I am right now, it would have been impossible for me. If you ask me, if you'd ask me maybe 20 years ago, I've, I've been doing this for 23 years professionally. If you had asked me 24 years ago, before I started this journey, do you think you're ever going to be in WWE working hand to hand with Shawn Michaels, with Triple H, with Fit Finley, Terry Taylor, Norman Smiley, Booker T. I would have said, get out of here. You're crazy. I mean, I love this. I want to do this. But I don't know if, I, I don't know if I, a Mexicano like me, born and raised in Mexico, will ever make it to the big leagues. And guess what? I did it. And I had, like I said before, I had to go through a lot of approval here and there. My dad, for instance, like, I was always with him when I was a little kid, like traveling on the road, buses, airplanes, locker rooms, arenas. That was good. But the second I show interest in actually doing this for a living, everything changed. He was like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I'd rather you go to school, get a degree, have one of them normal lives. I live, I live this. Because the thing about Lucha Libre or or sports entertainment or wrestling or wrestling, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's a decision that you take for life. That's it. If it's your calling, if it's, if it's, if God himself told you, this is what you got to do, by all means, do it. Just know one thing. And I always say this to the people that trains at the PC or anyone who want to listen. If you choose to do this, commit a thousand percent. Because it's going to take everything from you. It's going to take your time. It's going to take your body. It's going to take sometimes your family. Yeah. Yeah. But trust me, if you love this, it'll be worth it. And if you die and you were born again, you'll do it again. Yes, so indeed. so uh, talking about adversity, you know, tradition in Lucha Libre is your dad, as a legend, inherits his name and his lineage to you. And you have to carry on in the ring. Well, hear this book. My dad didn't give me his name. He gave it to my cousin. (laughs) Wow. That was the ultimate. I don't want you to do this. When I, when I, when I saw that, I started training more intensely with different maestros. And eventually I, I made my debut and my name was top secret. That was my name. I started walking and rolling. And after three years, my dad decided I was worth it. I was 
good enough for him to give me his name. And that's when he gave me his name after three years of actually doing this. So I know what it is to carry on a tradition, a heritage, the culture of Lucha Libre. Do you, uh, do you think your, uh, your dad was just giving you the ultimate test? You know, because that's what I, sometimes with my students, I give them tests and they don't even know they're, that they're being tested. Uh, do you think your dad was just really giving you that ultimate test to see if this was something you really wanted? Because I'm sure he knew how hard this journey was for himself and to, and to see you go on this journey, knowing what you're getting ready to, to embark upon, you, you know, you got to be ready for something like that. Do you think that? Uh, I, I sure hope so. <laughs> I hope so. But I also think, and I'm after more than 20 years doing this, injuries haven't eluded me. I've had, I have back surgeries, knee surgery, nose broken three times, fingers, elbows, hip, you name it. I think he was just trying to protect his son. And uh, I mean, who wouldn't want his son to, to achieve glory? in the very activity that you've been doing for, my family's been in this business since the seventies. So I'm sure he wanted me to achieve in life. And what better way to do it than his own realm, Lucha Libre. Yeah. But I think he, he also wanted his son to be healthy and have a, a normal quote unquote, normal life. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, on the flip side, do you uh, feel like you push yourself to the, um, to the pinnacle to get to this point, just to stick it to dad and say, look what I did, dad, I did this. <laughs> do, do you feel a little <laughs> bit of that as well? Absolutely, Booker, yes. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least, at least, at least when he said, that's what I thought, that's, that was my impression is, you're not worth it to carry on with my name. It's a big name in Mexican Lucha Libre. You're not worth it. That's what I thought. Now, I'm sure that wasn't his intention, but that's exactly what I thought. And so I trained hard, intense, and I became a different man all around. So when he saw me again, rocking and rolling, he didn't see his son no more. He saw a person, a, a grown, well, I wasn't grown man yet, but he saw a person that wanted to be a star, that wanted to represent. And one of the learnings I've had from him and many other legends is every time you go out there, you're not just representing yourself, your family, your lineage. You're representing Lucha Libre overall, all the legends. So you might as well do it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Ahead, you talk, uh, Santos, great to meet you. Brett Gilmore here. You talk about inheriting a legacy uh, from your father. Another legacy that you've, though, inherited recently is the legacy of the LWO, the Latino World Order. You're sporting the shirt right now. I think us wrestling fans are excited to, there it is, we're excited to see the LWO back. What does it mean to carry on that legacy and especially going into Backlash, which is going down next Saturday, May 5th, on Peacock, the next premium live event? What is it like to carry on that legacy? En el Coliseo de Puerto Rico. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Brad, uh, uh, well, first of all, Lucha Libre is about respect, like I said before. And Legado del Fantasma, which is my faction, legacy of El Fantasma, El Fantasma is my dad. Uh, we represent Lucha Libre. And Lucha Libre is about respect, family, tradition, heritage, culture, what I call my THC. Tradition, heritage, and culture. And I'm addicted to it. And when I saw that Dominic was disrespecting his dad. He was not just uh, disrespecting Rey Mysterio, a legend, now Hall of Famer. He was disrespecting the entire Lucha Libre tradition. And that, I can see that happening. So that's why I render my services to Rey, you know, like, we got your back. And eventually, you know, all the process was, it was a very beautiful process. When I first got into WWE, I wanted to take his legacy and make it my own. I'm a warrior. I'm a fighter. That's how I, that's how I won my, my dad's mask in the first place. I had to fight for it. And I said, I truly believe I'm the best luchador in the world right now. So I wanted to take his legacy. But guess what? When we found each other in the ring for the first time, that failed four way a couple months ago, I realized... What I got for him is admiration and respect. I gave him my mask 
and he gave me his mask. That creates a bond that's unbreakable. It's the ultimate sign of respect in Lucha Libre. So we started rocking and rolling together and just trying to make Dom understand what he's missing. He's missing on a very rich, beautiful tradition, Lucha Libre. He wouldn't understand. But then that very night when uh, Ray was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he said, you know, guys, if you're going to have my back, we might as well do it in style. And you know, Ray is a is a fashion icon. I thought it was gonna yeah. take out like a, like a Gucci or Prada or Versace. <laughs> Little did I know, when he pulls the shirts out, it's L W O. Of course, nostalgia. Of course, thinking of the past. Yes, but right now is the Latino time. You name it, music, we're there. Movies, we're there. Sports entertainment, of course. Politically, socially, geographically, we're everywhere. Socially, it's time. It's time for us to rise yeah. and represent. Yeah, I like that, man. You know, um, you know, L LWO um, was definitely that part in my career that I was a part of, and that's when Eddie really started getting his shine, man. And you know, you like Eddie, um, you know, luchador, you know, and you represent Mexico. Um, but like Eddie, you know, you show your face, how important it is for you, for the fans, you know, in Mexico to actually see your face and, you know, one day aspire to be, you know, Santos Escobar. Well, the thing about uh, the Lucha Libre tradition is when you, when you have a mask and you lose your mask, because we have stipulation matches where you put your mask on the line. And what that means is if you lose, you have to take your mask off never to wear it again. Now, this happened to me in Mexico in 2018. I lost my mask to L.A. Park, La Parca, who was actually an LWO original member, by the way. Uh, so I lost my mask. I took it off. But when I got to WWE on NXT, my thing has always been to represent who I am, where I come from, and what I am about. And that is Lucha Libre. All around. That, that's, that's, what I, that's, that's my life in a nutshell, Lucha Libre. So I couldn't distance myself from that. So I think we all agreed, uh, Triple H, Rob Dog, Shawn Michaels, creative team, that the best way to do it was to reintroduce the mask luchador and eventually introduce the actual character that was gonna, that was gonna, that was gonna bring life to, which was Santos Escobar. And I think the result was, was positive because we did get that Lucha Libre first stint when I, when I first became the Cruiserweight champion. But then everyone was like, whoa, he took his mask off. And that raised a lot of questions that, of course, I had the answers to. And to have the opportunity to actually stand in the middle of a ring with the mic and tell you my story and who I am, that's priceless. No, no, man. I, I love it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think I think it's great. Um, the fans actually get a chance to see you and and be able to praise you when they actually see you walking through the airport or whatever, you know, walking, you know, in Mexico. You know, my thing, my thing is I say that because one night, um, Brad and I, we were out and uh Ray Mysterio was with us and people was asking for my autograph. Ray was sitting right there. No, no one, no one ever thought about it. You know, so I'd say for you to actually have that when you are out there in public and that young, you know, kids see Santos Escobar and how far you've come, you know, they can aspire to be you. That, that That's what life's truly all about. What's your ultimate goal um, in, in the WWE? Well, right before I tell you my ultimate, my ultimate goal, which is main event WrestleMania and uh, win the World Heavyweight Championship, uh, I got to tell you one thing. While we're doing WWE, is put smiles on people's faces. Yes, that we do. But we're also in the emotions business. We create emotions. We generate emotions. And to me, in my case, and I always tell my story where I come from, where I was born, where I was raised, inspiration. That moved me years ago. That put me through a lot. I had to overcome a lot of obstacles in my life. But that inspiration that I got from many superstars. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, of course. That's my people, that's mi raza, that's mi gente. But also the Triple H's, the Daniel Bryan's, the Kofi Kingston's, 
the Booker T, the inspiration that we can actually generate on thousands or millions of people. That's why I'm here. If I can do it, then you out there, Mexicano, Latino, you can do it too. All you got to do is show up, show up, show up every day, every day. That's all you got to do. People's going to tell you you can't do it. The same for you. You're not big enough. You're not handsome enough. You're not strong enough. You ain't got it. Never mind. Show up. Show up. Trust me. It'll happen. If I can inspire people to think like that and act like that, they don't have to become WWE superstars. Maybe they want to be doctors. Maybe they want to rule their country. Maybe they want to be lawyers. I don't, I don't know. That's on you. But if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. You know, I got a saying, man, um, you know, and, and you are an example of it. Uh, preparation is the only luck you're ever going to have in this life, man. We got backlash, guys, coming up May 6th in Puerto Rico. You do not want to miss out. You do not want to get shut out. That bunny is going to be in the main event. Of course, Santos Escobar is going to be somewhere in the house along with the LWO. But, man, I just want to thank you, man. I know you're busy. I want to thank you for stepping inside the Hall of Fame and just sharing with me just a little bit of your life. And hopefully we can get you back inside the Hall of Fame and get a little bit of more champagne, a little bit of more caviar, and do it up. Bruh, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. It is uh, truly an honor to be in your presence uh, on NXT, on the shows where I see you. I always come and, and say hi because... You are, um, regardless of what everyone says, which is that you are a legend. To me, you are a legend, a true legend in the flesh. And every time I see you, I just got to come by and say hi, shake your hand. And, of course, I want to come back to the Hall of Fame and have some champagne caviar. In the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, we got to get ready because next Friday, May 5th, SmackDown Live is in Puerto Rico. And oh, then yeah. May 6th, yeah. Backlash in Puerto Rico. I'm going to be there. LWO is going to be there. And we're going to be supporting Selena Vega, La Reina, who is on a, the biggest endeavor of her life, trying to get the SmackDown Women's Champion Championship. And, of course, Bad Bunny, who's got a San Juan Street fight. i never been to Puerto Rico, but I'm sure this San Juan Street fight is going to be something. So I got to be there. Yeah, you got it. You got <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I wish I was going to be there, man. I won't be there, but man, Santos, make sure you have enough fun for me, man. And guys, um, stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. That was Santos Escobar. We'll be back in a momento. Hey, this is Booker T. Thanks for checking out Reality of Wrestling on YouTube. Make sure to click and subscribe to check out all the latest content. You don't want to miss out. You don't want to get shut out. And I know you can dig that. You dig it, sucker! You are listening to the Hall of Fame. Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore.